How do I open an ISO file in Windows? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for askleo.com. ISO files are essentially a disk image, and I'll talk about exactly what that means in a moment. There are basically three ways to deal with a disk image. Put it on a disk, make it look like you put it on a disk, or pretend it's something else. I'm gonna walk through each one of those in turn. ISOs, which stands for International Standards Organization, it's actually short for a very specific ISO standard, are a type of archive, if you will. They are literally an image of a disk, which means that they contain every file, every sector, everything on the disk. In fact, ISOs are completely ignorant of what's on the disk, how it's formatted, what the files might be, or so on. It is simply a sector by sector copy, if you will, of a specific disk, typically CDs or DVDs. They're used very often these days as distribution mechanisms. For example, you can download Windows 10 and Windows 11 ISO files, which are single large files that represent the installation media, the DVD that is Windows 10 or Windows 11. Now, there are a couple of different ways to deal with an ISO if you happen to have one. Let's switch over to Windows 11 here real quick. One of the ways is to mount it. Now, if I take a look here, I've got several files that are going on here. Earlier today, I downloaded this image of Debian Linux. Just to use an example that isn't Windows. If I double click on it, it'll mount it, but it's actually easier to show you that if you right click on it and click on mount, it will mount the image. What does that mean? Well, like I said, it's an image of a disk. So by mounting it, we can make it look like a disk. And that's exactly what Windows does. You can see here, I now have a fake DVD drive that is the contents or shows the contents of that ISO image. I could poke around the file, I can see what the files are that are in it. And if I want to, I can, for example, right click on a file, hit copy, which is this icon here in Windows 11. And now I can go to my C drive, uh, pick a random folder to put it in. I'll put it in my uh, users folder and click on paste which is the clipboard with a paste thing on it. And I've now copied a file from the ISO, from inside of the ISO to my hard disk as an independent file. So that's mounting. When you're done with it, you can right click on it and click on eject, exactly as if it were a DVD. And now it's gone. Option number two, which I can't show you here because I don't have it as something on my drive, is I can, in many cases, right click on this, potentially have to show more options, but then one of the options here would be to burn a disk image. This would assume that I have a DVD drive, an optical disk drive, that is capable of burning DVDs and I have blank DVD media. After the burn is complete, I now have an actual DVD, in this case of the Debian installation media, that I could then boot a PC from in order to install or experiment with Debian. Bottom line here though is that the second approach is to take a disk image and burn it to a disk. The third option is a little bit less obvious to treat it as an archive, what does that mean? Well, an archive is kind of like a zip file, for example. Zips are different, don't get me wrong. Zips are compressed, they're organized differently, but ultimately they're still collections of files, like a disk image. So what if we were to start a tool like 7-Zip? 7-Zip is a zip file manager. Now it happens to be able to support multiple different formats, including some of the Linux formats that we don't normally see on Windows, it can support zip files, it has its own default format, the .7z format, but guess what? It can open and poke around ISO files. So here's that Debian ISO file that we've been experimenting with. If I just click on it, now 7-zip has opened it and I can now do things like extract, copy files out and more. But the bottom line is that 
it's very easy to deal with ISO files, whether you mount them, burn them, or use a tool like 7-Zip to extract them. There's really nothing preventing you from using and seeing what's inside. For updates, for comments, for related links, and more, visit askleo.com slash 3228. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.